My name is Shamal Chandradat Singh, and I will be doing uh, the main part of the presentation this morning, but I'll also be joined by Sekou Alain and Takia Defour, who are the managers of investor sourcing at InvestTT. Just to clear up some housekeeping matters, there is a chat ses uh, section on your taskbar, and feel, f feel free to use that to ask us any questions that you'd like to during the course of the webinar, and we'll make sure to answer them either during the webinar or at the question and answer period at the end. This is a little bit about me. Uh, I do come from a private sector background, uh, and uh, coming into InvestTT, uh, I hope to bring some of that private sector background in. Uh, both of the managers of the company also have significant private sector background and it's part of the aesthetic of Investor and Tobago to ensure that we have an understanding of the private sector in all the ways that we do business. A little bit about Takia. So let's cover what we're going to talk about today. We're going to start with an overview of Trinidad and Tobago for those people who are uninitiated or uh, may not know uh, too much about the country uh, yet. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the advantages of doing business in Trinidad and Tobago. We're going to talk about the investment opportunities that uh, we have on this island. Then we're going to talk a little bit about Invest Trinidad and Tobago. We'll talk a little bit about some of the key services that we offer that really set us apart from uh, other investment promotion agencies in the world. And then we're going to take your questions. So let's just start by asking a question. And you're going to see during the course of this webinar that we'll ask a series of poll questions that will pop up on your screen. And please do uh, answer those for us. To start off, I'd just like to ask, uh, how many uh, of you are Trinidad and Tobago nationals living abroad? Uh, one of the areas that we'd like to highlight, uh, even though we're presenting this to site selectors, investors, is that we do have a lot of diaspora that express uh, always to us that they would like to come home and start a business or find something to invest in. So if you are a diaspora member, uh, we'd just like you to know that we do have very specific opportunities that uh, we have tailored to the diaspora, and there is a substantial amount of help in the form of incentives uh, from removal of duty on entry of goods and vehicles, etc., that uh, the government of Trinidad and Tobago does have specifically for diaspora members that want to come back home. I'm going to start off today really by showing you a little video on Trinidad and Tobago that gives you a good overview of what the country looks like, the feel of the country, and some of the opportunities that we do have. The driving force behind Trinidad and Tobago's growth led me here. Their energy independence, founded on the strength of their status as a major player in oil and gas. They've leveraged that energy advantage to become one of the world's largest producers of petrochemicals like methanol and ammonia to create an environment where opportunity is clearly thriving. I like that those conditions, because investing or relocating is something I only entertain when the mix is right. Investity is the first point of contact for all investors. We do everything from helping you through our one-stop shop with permits and approvals to registering your business. It's one of the most cosmopolitan societies I've ever experienced, with a diversity of people and culture that's unmatched in the region. There's more in the right mix to drive innovation. So Chagramas has a number of investment opportunities. One of them is of course the golf course. And we have the yachting industry which benefits from the safety of Trinidad's location below the hurricane belt. We're looking for investors to help us with the hotel and marina. We also have 9,000 feet of boardwalk. We have a unique sort of ecological environment that we want to protect. So this is the raw form of the bean. Fine flavored cocoa. Sought after by all the chocolates in the world. With a presence here, I can be on Latin America's doorstep. Yet outside of the hurricane belt, a real sweet spot for transshipment. Trinidad and Tobago is ideally located. 
needed for minerals, and we bring four medium-sized ships, and then we transfer the cargo into a very large ship, which then goes off to China. Great, so I hope you enjoy that video. And uh, it's also available on YouTube. If you search for Investor in Dan Tobago, you can look at that video once again. Uh, and we will be making this presentation available to you on our website, www.investtt.co.tt, uh, when this broadcast is finished. So now I'm going to give you a little overview of Trinidad and Tobago as a country. So where is it located? It is the southernmost of the Caribbean islands, uh, located about 12 kilometers off the coast of Venezuela. Some of the information on Trinidad and Tobago, our main language is English, our population is 1.3 million, uh, our, square, our area is around 5,100 square kilometers, and we have a, a very standard temperature of about 31 degrees during the day, 21 degrees at night, and it sort of goes throughout the year that way, that we do have two seasons, uh, a dry season and a rainy season. Some interesting facts that we, we love about Trinidad and Tobago is that we're considered to be one of the happiest nations in the Caribbean, and one of the happiest nations in the world, in fact, actually. And, uh, and CNN actually ranked us uh, in, the, in the last poll and the one right before it as one of the countries with the sexiest accents in the world. And don't take my accent as uh, an indicator of it. Uh, I kind of have a sort of American accent having grown up there. So a little bit more about the economics of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, we have a GDP per capita of just under 20,000 uh, US dollars. And we, our inflation is relatively low at 5.6%. Unemployment is, is quite low at 3.2%, and our labor force is just around 650,000 people. When you look at our economy, 54.9% uh, of the, the GDP comes from the service sector, 36.2% from oil and gas, and 8% from manufacturing. And services definitely are the largest employer at 84.8%. I'm going to cover 12 interesting facts about Trinidad and Tobago for those of you who are new to the country. And for some of you that know the country, you, this may also be uh, new to you. So we're the, world, we're the home of the world's hottest naturally occurring pepper, the Trinidad Maruga scorpion. It, it ranks at 1.2 million Schofield on the Schofield scale. And to give you some level of indication, the next hottest pepper uh, is about 800,000 on the scale. And your average jalapeno is about 8,000 on the scale. So you go from 8,000 to 1.2 million, you can imagine how hot this pepper really is. And our scientists here in Trinidad continue to breed and discover new peppers that are competing with the scorpion and maybe getting even hotter. We're also uh, the home of the scarlet ibis. It's our national bird. It comes into the Kearney Swamp area of Trinidad and Tobago uh, every evening at about 6 o'clock. And it's one of the most beautiful sights that you could see. The sky turns red with these birds coming in. Really, really quite beautiful. Uh, we're also the only country to have invented an acoustic uh, musical instrument in the 20th century, the steel pan. And most people in the world now know that as this Caribbean instrument, but it was invented here in Laventil, Trinidad and Tobago. We also have one of the two naturally occurring pitch lakes in the world. It's about 99 acres of pitch that basically comes out of the ground. And it's a self-sustaining or self-replenishing resource. So as they dig out from the pitch lake, it just sort of comes back up to fill it up. And if you ever come to Trinidad, it'd be one of those things that you definitely have to see. 
for the divers on the call on the webinar, uh, we do have great diving in Trinidad uh, on in the Speyside area and in the Buco area off Tobago, and we are home to the world's largest brain coral, which measures 10 by 16 feet, and we are home to, home to by far the largest ca uh, carnival in the Caribbean. It happens on the Monday and Tuesday before Ash Wednesday every year. And uh, maybe it's my personal opinion, but I think it's probably the best carnival in the world. We also are known worldwide for the quality of our cocoa. It's used in Belgian, Swiss, and French chocolates. Uh, mo many companies use it to flavor their chocolate, so they may use bulk cocoa from your Ghana's or your other West African countries but then the, the flavor of the chocolate will come from the Trinidad cocoa. So it commands a much higher price on the international market, and uh, we are very proud of the products that are made from the Trinidad and Tobago cocoa. We also uh, are the home of the House of Angostura. If you recognize that bottle with the, with the very distinctive yellow cap, it's in bars of many people worldwide, Angostura bitters, uh, but that does also come from Trinidad and Tobago. We're also the largest exporter of ammonia and methanol in the world. We have the largest single site of methanol in the world as well. And uh, a very interesting fact, Robinson Crusoe and Treasure Island were actually based on Trinidad and Tobago, or on Tobago specifically. And Swiss Family Robinson was filmed in Tobago. Continuing on with Tobago, it actually is the site of the oldest rainforest reserve in the Western Hemisphere, uh, which is the main ridge reserve in Tobago. We also have, uh, in the east coast of Trinidad, in the area of Toco, uh, leatherback turtles that come to nest. And so you, there are two times in the year where you can see them, once when the, the hatchlings are going back out to sea, and once when the mothers come in to lay the eggs. So now that we talked about some of the context of Trinidad and Tobago as, as, as a location, let's talk a little bit about the advantages of doing business in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, we are definitely considered to be a very strategic hub within the Caribbean, Central American, and Latin American region. So we are one of the key areas of transshipment in the region. Most of goods that come into the CARICOM single market come into Trinidad and then are disambiguated into smaller cargoes for the, the, the lesser Antilles. And we also have boats that di leave directly from Trinidad into Colombia and into Panama. So uh, it, it is a very strategic shipping hub. We also have shipping lanes down the eastern, the western, the eastern coast, sorry, of Latin America. As in terms of air transport, we are three and a half hours away from Miami International Airport, and through our connections to Miami, New York, London, Houston, uh, Venezuela, and Panama City, you can then connect on to a plethora of locations. So there is substantial air access from Trinidad. In terms of market access, we actually have a, a total market of around 947 million people that you can reach from Trinidad and Tobago through our multilateral trade agreements, our partial scope agreements with a lot of countries in the Caribbean and Central America, and through CARICOM, which we consider to be our domestic market, as we're a single taxation zone, CARICOM. Uh, which means that once you uh, enter into the CARICOM market, you are not charged any additional duties and levies uh, throughout any exportation you may do from Trinidad into other CARICOM nations. Let's talk a little, about, a little bit about cost. And cost is important in the context, uh, context of how much per unit of cost you will then receive back in productivity. And FT, FDI Magazine, which is a, a publication of Financial Times, the newspaper, uh, actually ranks Trinidad and Tobago as number one in, in, in the Central American, excuse me one second, we're having some feedback. All right, so FDI Magazine ranks Trinidad and Tobago as number one in terms of cost effectiveness in the Central American and Latin America and Caribbean region. And when you look at the cost, we have three cents per kilowatt hour energy uh, electricity rates we have very cheap water we have cheap mobile uh, we have cheap internet and these costs along with the cost of labor are structured in such a way that per unit of cost into your production you will have a high level of productivity and output 
In terms of uh, infrastructure, continuing on with infrastructure, we, we have the second largest road network in the Caribbean. We have, uh, we're rack number three in terms of ports for the region. We have a, a, one of the highest mobile penetration rates in the world at 139%. We have a very high internet penetration rate at 80%. And we have fiber optic links coming into the country, uh, five of them. So we have a very strong infrastructure backbone from which you can sort of build your business and, and successfully get to market easily. In terms of the advantages of doing business in Trinidad, the Global Competitiveness Index ranks us number one as uh, exports as a percentage of GDP, which means that if you're coming here to Trinidad Tobago to set up a business that's going to be exporting out, you'll be in very good company with the exporters that we do have uh, exporting into the CARICOM region uh, and internationally as well. In terms of prevalence of trade barriers, that means the lower the number, the less trade barriers we do have. Uh, we're ranked number three in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, and we're ranked at number four for a number of various indicators, such as the quality of our management schools and education system, uh, the mobile telephone subscriptions per 100 in the population, and the effect of taxation on incentives. So there are a lot of competitive advantages of coming to Trinidad and Tobago to do business. Here are just some of the selected rates in terms of what it's going to cost you to set up in Trinidad and Tobago. It's going to cost you around $100 to, to establish a business all in. Uh, and then you're going to pay a relatively low corporation tax of 25%. And across the board, we have a low value-added tax rate of 12.5%. In terms of other fees as well, such as your work permits, uh, you know, they, they also are, are, are quite low. And our national minimum wage is $2.27, so roughly $2.30 uh, per hour. In terms of establishing a business in Trinidad, now that you know some of the costs that are involved with it, it would be good to know that we've actually put a lot of effort as a government uh, and a country into improving the timelines for which you can get your business up and running and then sort of access the market as well. So things like registering a business that used to take seven days now takes three days. And things like uh, uh, e-permit that used to take up to four weeks can now be done in a single day. So many things have been improved in terms of the process of doing business in Trinidad over the past few years, and the government continues to be very committed to making those changes to make doing business in Trinidad and Tobago an easier process. And uh, the InvestCT commitment to you is that uh, we will also uh, handhold the business that comes into our country. So we will work with any business to make sure that we manage the process of permits and approvals to make sure that you get up and running in the quickest time possible. So uh, I'm going to hand over now to the two managers of investor sourcing within InvestDT to talk a little bit about the opportunities. But just to begin things off, I'll give you an idea of what the sectors are that we promote for investment. So the first sector is agriculture and agro-processing. Uh, the next is creative industries. We also have financial services, which isn't handled by InvestDT. It's actually handled by our sister agency, Trent Tobago International Financial uh, Com Company Limited. And uh, we would be glad to uh, look at anybody who is interested in uh, doing financial services and make a warm connection to an officer within TTIFC uh, so that you can get that interest taken care of. Uh, we also handle fish and fish processing, the maritime industry, manufacturing, ICT, uh, which is information and communication technology, uh, and as subsets of that, software design. Uh, and we also handle aviation and tourism. So I'm now going to hand over to Takia DeFore, who will cover the sectors of agriculture, creative industries, uh, tourism. And uh, while, we're handing out, while I'm handing over, uh, our marketing team is going to be putting up another poll question for you to take a look at. Okay, thank you, Shamal. I'm going to start off with some specific opportunities in tourism. We have uh, 
two greenfield and one brownfield development. I will start off with Las Cuevas Estate, which is a 500-acre estate just 20 minutes north of Port of Spain. It's actually adjacent to the world-famous Maracas Bay and the famous Bacon Shark. This property is actually approved for two hotel developments and several commercial and residential properties. Each hotel development is average around US 10 million, but this is a negotiable figure. Las Cuevas Estate is actually the only blue flag eco award winning beach in the English speaking Caribbean. Now we move across to beautiful Tobago and the Blue Haven Hotel, which is the oldest hotel in Tobago. It's won several eco and sustainable tourism awards and it actually has a fort on board on the property. There's about 55 rooms currently and they have approvals to go up to 104 rooms. All the rooms in Blue Haven are sea view and we have many famous faces passing through Blue Haven at any given time. And finally, we have the Golden Grove Estate. This is a quite large estate. It's around 400 acres and we have it zoned for a four or five star property. This estate is approved for 700 rooms and the investment would total around US 225 million. Agro and agro-processing is another one of our sectors and Shamal would have mentioned earlier about our world famous Maruga scorpion pepper which is the hottest naturally occurring pepper in the world. We are currently looking at opportunities for pepper mash production for agro-processing and pepper processing for weapon grade pepper and anti-fouling boat paint. We also have a seafood development company that has done some quite thorough studies in aquaculture and we have a number of models that are ready for commercialization. Going into agro and agro processing a little more, we have the cocoa which as Shamal mentioned, Trinidad is one of eight countries in the world with 100% fine cocoa. We also have the longest cocoa breeding program in the world and we have the International Gene Bank. So combined with the pedigree of our cocoa and this long time research, Trinidad is the ideal location for a high-end niche chocolate manufacturer. Creative industries. Trinidad is world known for the, our um, carnival and there are many films that were filmed on location in Trinidad including Girlfriend's Getaway and Caribbean's Next Top Model. There are several opportunities in filming shoots and we do have a rebate of 35% for productions filmed in Trinidad and Tobago. We also have opportunities for song stages and equipment rental and made in TNT and apparel and carnival costume production. Now I'm going to pass on to Seku who will go into some more details with the remaining sectors. But be while we do the handover, <laughs> we're going to have a poll. Hi, so this is Sekou Allen. I am going to be covering the investment opportunities in the manufacturing, both light and heavy manufacturing areas, and ICT and maritime. Um, as you can see on your screen now, um, these investment opportunities focus on the manufacturing and, and primarily in the light manufacturing and assembly areas. Um, you would note that Trinidad and Tobago already has a very large manufacturing cluster that supplies not just the Trinidad and Tobago market, but also the CARICOM and the regional market. The strength of that industry, really based on the low cost of energy, the access to great port and internal road infrastructure, as well as access to industrial parks and, and locations for manufacturing. And so that existing cluster is also open for foreign and local direct investments to continue to expand in some of the major areas that you see in front of you, particularly in assembly type and related products um, and printing and packaging. Uh, we also have a very large downstream energy uh, manufacturing industry clustered in the Point Lisas area. So most of the opportunities you see before you, and I won't go through 
all are, are predicated on the ability to access raw material in Trinidad and Tobago and the region, easy access for that raw material through our port infrastructure, low cost of energy, and access to the uh, CARICOM and the regional markets through some of the, some of the trade agreements that uh, Shamal Sanjurat Singh would have highlighted before. Uh, I would also like to make note that uh, a lot of the interests that we receive in manufacturing are outside of these areas. So this list is by no means exhaustive and um, any interest that you may have, InvestTT would be able to put together the information that would justify Trinidad being um, a great place to invest in the light manufacturing and assembly area. Uh, the slide before you now uh, really highlights a greenfield manufacturing area in Trinidad and Tobago, and that is the development of a $2 billion silicon industrial cluster. Uh, this cluster is based on the ability to set up the entire value chain for the production of integrated photo photovoltaics in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and what you would see here is four discrete uh, investment opportunities, the first being in a float glass plant, the second, a metal, metallurgical grade silicon plant, a polysilicon plant, and an integrated photovoltaic plant, obviously, which would be the, the end of the value chain in the complete production of photovoltaics. Um, um, these four opportunities would exist within a geographical cluster within Trinidad and Tobago, and you would see um, under government approval that the land has been earmarked for this site. Uh, for all four plants um, um, and incentives being tailored for each plant as well as investors that may be uh, interested in more than one of the plants and, and, and a larger part of the value, um, value chain. Uh, there is an in-depth feasibility study that is complete that is available for investors to access and to look at and it really positions Trinidad and Tobago from a cost perspective as being an ideal um, location in the region for the production of photovoltaics and the entire value chain. Um, there are ready markets in the region. Um, and we've assessed that there are five gigawatts of capacity right here in the Caribbean itself, and obviously significant demand and growing demand, more importantly, in the Latin American and North American market. So we encourage you, um, we really do encourage you to contact us um, with interest for each one of these or any one of the, the opportunities within this silicon industrial cluster. Uh, we are really titling it Point Lisas Next because it, it is the next Point Lisas in terms of um, building on the benefits of the oil and gas and the low cost of energy in Trinidad and Tobago and development of a new cluster in the country. I will now move on uh, to the maritime industry and some of the investment opportunities there. Now, the investment opportunities in the maritime industry are really built on the foundation of our location at the crossroads of Latin America and North America our location outside of the hurricane belt, and so natural disasters not affecting the maritime cluster in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as the large, natural, very calm harbor that we have in the Gulf of Paria. So you would see that many of these investment opportunities take advantage of those natural advantages, as well as some of the infrastructural advantages that have been put in place since. Um, the first opportunity is uh, the ship repair opportunity, and we've we've um, recognized that there is a dearth of mega ship repair facilities in the Western Hemisphere. And so we find that a lot of the ships that service the North American and South American market and across the Atlantic to Europe and Africa actually would have to travel all the way out to Asia in order to do their regular mega ship repair um, um, services that are, is warranted by the insurances required on these ships. Obviously, time spent not on the transport routes transporting cargo is very expensive, and so bringing on more capacity in the ship repair and mega ship repair area in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, we've um, determined that there's a large opportunity. There, in fact, is a current opportunity that is looking for financing. So um, investors have the opportunity to look at a developmental and an operational opportunity here, as well as a financing and a contracting opportunity for the development of a mega ship repair facility in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, offshore, offshore bulk transshipment is also a huge opportunity that investors, one major investor out of Germany has, has already taken advantage of and again that's primarily due to our locational and geographic advantage um, in between the shipping lanes of um, bulk materials, particularly iron ore coming out of South America needing to travel to markets in North America, Europe and Asia. And so uh, being outside of the hurricane belt and having a location uh, in Natural Harbor and the Gulf of Paria allows for offshore bulk transshipment where 
the smaller ships from the Amazon or from the South America can then offload into larger cape sized vessels that can then travel around Africa into the Asian markets um, that will automatically um, lower the cost profile of anybody offering those transportation services. In the, the last two opportunities I will cover uh, both um, supported or have the foundation based on the existing cluster of leisure marine activities in the northwestern peninsula in Trinidad and Tobago uh, in Chagaramas. And so um, there is uh, much capacity left for leisure marine and yachting services and, and, and services centered around leisure marine activities, um, as well as the development of marinas, particularly in Tobago. So we have a large cluster for leisure marine and, um, and marinas in Chagaramas, but there are actually no marinas existing in Tobago. And we find a lot of the leisure mar marine activities obviously centered around taking those yachts and, and those catamarans over to Tobago, the, the beautiful island in Tobago. And so what we've heard from those that are already engaged in this industry is that the development of a marina in Tobago represents a huge opportunity. And in fact, there is one very specific opportunity that we will be able to share information with you. Also, ship storage facilities is a major, major opportunity in Trinidad. Given our location outside of the hurricane belt, you would find that during the hurricane season, many of the yacht and, and, and ship owners would store their ships in Trinidad and Tobago uh, to prevent any, um, any accidents or any damage from natural disasters in the region. Um, you would now see uh, information communication technologies and some of the investment opportunities that exist here. And again, the foundation for these opportunities are based uh, primarily one on our um, technological infrastructure, both in country and off island. So we do have five undersea cables leading back into the Napa of the Americas that gives us great connectivity with North and Latin America. Uh, and then in fact, there's a, a lot of capacity, a great deal of capacity left on that network for new operations. And we also see next to 100% of fiber connectivity within the populated areas of Trinidad and Tobago. And that's a technological foundation as well as the labor pool that we have in Trinidad and Tobago that ha shares a large cultural affinity with North America um, and allows you to have that labor arbitrage between North America and the Caribbean as well as as well as related labor charges to the Philippines and India allows you uh, access to the opportunities, one, in the back office operations and call center area. So we recently, recently had, some of you may have seen this, um, a, um, a major investment by i which is a US-based uh, call center company that operates globally with 17 sites that made their, their newest 18th site to serve the telecom te telecommunications clients in North America in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, um, and so there, we've seen that there's a capacity for many more seats in Trinidad and Tobago in the call center and the back office uh, area as well as regional headquartering for those that are looking to target the Caribbean and the Latin American market for IT services. Trinidad and Tobago, again, based on its technical infrastructure and access to labor pool, uh, makes a great location for doing your regional headquarters here. Uh, in the IT services area, um, we have seen uh, major invest in, investment interest in Trinidad and Tobago and, and in a higher end IT service um, destination. And what we've done is actually partnered with the Inter-American Development Bank, that is the government of Trinidad, um, in order to develop that, that capacity even further, particularly from a labor standpoint and from a marketing and promotion standpoint. And so we have set up and, and are in the process of setting up an IT services hub that will allow for one, a finish, finishing school for those computer science graduates that would want to upskill to be able to serve a global market in IT services, um, as well as entrepreneurial firms and foreign investors that would locate at this hub uh, to create a cluster of activity uh, that could then spin off even more entrepreneurial activity in the IT services area. And InvestIT will be partnering um, with the IDB and the government uh, to promote Trinidad further as a destination for foreign direct investment in the IT services and software development space. Some of the other opportunities in the ICT area uh, are data centers. Um, and again, we would have talked about the very low cost of energy, uh, three cents US per kilowatt hour uh, in Trinidad and Tobago. Obviously data centers being huge, electric, have, being huge electricity and energy drawers. And, and so the cost of operating a, a data center from Trinidad and Tobago, coupled with the technological infrastructure that gives us great connectivity in the region and into Latin America makes Trinidad a great destination for servicing the data storage and the data processing needs of the Caribbean and the Latin American region. 
And so uh, Takia and I would have gone through some of the major opportunities in Trinidad. I would like to highlight that even outside of those opportunities, any opportunity that you would consider based on some of the natural advantages and the infrastructural advantages in Trinidad that you may be interested in looking at, uh, InvestIT will be willing um, to assess and, and, and lead you along the path of investing in those areas as well. Um, and outside of those, in, um, uh, on top of, or the icing on the cake of some of the advantages from investing in the sectors we would have highlighted, there are also further incentives um, that would um, lead you to investing in those areas. Some are sector specific and some are overall. The, the, the overall uh, investment climate in Trinidad and the major incentive found in the Foreign Investment Act of 1990 allows foreign investors to own 100% of the share capital in private companies in Trinidad and Tobago. So joint ventures uh, are not required. Uh, there can be 100% foreign ownership of, con uh, of companies in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as unrestricted repatriation of profits back to the home company. So that is completely allowed in the Trinidad landscape. Uh, you also have permission to own up to 30% of share capital of a local public company without a license, um, as well as up to five acres of land for trade and business without a license. So um, what that really says is the landscape is very open to foreign direct investment. Some of the other incentives that uh, are cross-sectoral uh, are the Customs Act and the Free Zones Act. Now, the Customs Act uh, can give you access to duty-free imports on raw materials and equipment. And even stronger of an incentive is the Free Zones Act that can allow you to operate from a free zone in Trinidad and Tobago that is geographically neutral. So that free zone can exist anywhere within Trinidad and Tobago, including one floor or one office within a building. And that Free Zone Act allows you access to duty-free imports of equipment, raw materials, and access to indefinite corporate tax incentives uh, where you would not pay corporate taxes for an indefinite period. Uh, that Free Zone Act um, is, does apply to service-driven organizations as well as manufacturing organizations. Um, it does have a criteria of the export of more than 50% of services outside of the CARICOM market and more than 75% of, of, of manufactured goods outside of the CARICOM market. Uh, in agribusiness, there is an agricultural incentive program that is targeted to uh, Trinidad and Tobago nationals. So this would be of particular interest to diaspora members out there that are looking for agribusiness opportunities in Trinidad that would allow you to import any equipment uh, required for your agricultural operation or agri-processing operation free of duties. Um, in the creative industries, uh, we have a production rebate program for those looking to set up on location in Trinidad and Tobago and, and do film production, uh, which is a 35% cashback um, on your production uh, costs for producing in Trinidad and Tobago. And so you're looking uh, immediately at a 35% cost reduction on whatever your, your production um, budget is. Uh, under the Tourism Development Act, there are also a long list of tax incentives, all of which I won't go into today, but a major one being obviously the duty-free import of any equipment um, and uh, furniture, furniture and equipment required for the development of, of hotel properties in Trinidad and Tobago. So um, I will hand you over to Shamal Chandradat Singh to give you further information about Invest Trinidad and Tobago itself. But before I do that, uh, we will be running another poll for you on the webinar. Thank you. Great. So you just would have gotten a lot of information about the opportunities that are available in Trinidad and Tobago. And I think right now there's a poll that's asking you where your interest really lies uh, and which sector. So you know, go ahead and answer the poll. And I just want to remind you again that we will be making this presentation available to you on InvestIT's website after we're done here. So don't feel like it's a problem if you've missed any of the information that we're giving you because we'll be giving it to you again, and we will definitely keep the communication lines open to make sure that we have answered all of your questions. So let's talk a little bit about Trinidad, Invest Trinidad and Tobago, Invest TT, as we like to call it as well, for some of you who know that name. So this is some of the things that people have said about us as an agency, and I think it's a good place to start talking about the agency in terms of what other people think of us. And we'll look at the one from Inglot Cosmetics where Dwight Kenwood, the director of that company, has said, uh, thanks again for the prompt response and in general the outstanding service you have provided. 
the project coming to fruition is a testament to your outstanding service. And we can look at Dustin Fleming, who is the Vice President of Infrastructure at i a uh, recent entry into the Trinidad and Tobago market in the call center space, who says, thanks again for all your help and please pass this along to the rest of the InvestTT team. I know this is just the beginning, but it marks a big step in the right direction and we thank you for all your support. We wouldn't be here without all your hard work and dedication. And this really sort of, I think, sums up the, 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 the commitment of Investor in Tobago. We are here absolutely to service the needs of any incoming investors into Trinidad. And we'll talk a little bit about how we do that. So our responsibilities are in investor sourcing, which is a division that myself, Seku, and Takia are a part of. And investor sourcing really focuses on the proactive going to market to find investors that match opportunities in the eight sectors that Seiko and Takiya would have spoken to you about. We also, in that division, facilitate any incoming interest whatsoever. So even outside of those sectors, if there is an interest, we will work with you as an investor uh, to help you understand the Trinidad Tobago market and uh, some of the, the nuances of that particular industry or sector that you may be working in. Where we do not uh, have the specific expertise, such as in financial services and in downstream energy, we have sister agencies like TTIFC, Trinidad Tobago International Financial Company Limited, and National Energy Corporation Limited, uh, who respectively in the financial services space and in the downstream energy space will be your partner companies to help you get up and running in Trinidad. We also have an investor aftercare program under our investor services division that really focuses on helping investors who are already established in Trinidad grow further by reinvesting or by helping to remove any bottlenecks that may occur uh, in any of the processes that they are undertaking through a process of policy advocacy and working as the interface between the investor and the government of Trinidad and Tobago. We also have a responsibility for country branding and marketing. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, what are some of the key things that InvestD can do for you. One of the, the, the most important things is uh, in coming into any new market, you need information. And InvestDT will serve as the one point of amalgamation of any information that you do need. So through uh, a request for information, uh, which you can do via access to our website or by emailing any one of us or giving us a call, we will be able to put together and compile all that information into a single document that will answer all of your questions and provide any useful information about the process and costs of doing business here, uh, as well as some of the quality of life information. We also try to help with establishing your value chain locally. So wherever there are suppliers that we can put you in touch with or service vendors for any service that you may need, we'll be able to help you find those uh, companies within uh, the local companies that do exist already or any of the current foreign companies that are set up here. And the number of foreign companies that are set up here is actually substantial. When you got the invitation, you would have seen uh, the names of some of the high profile ones that are located here. But there are over 450 foreign companies established in Trinidad and Tobago at the moment. So to sum up in terms of the way that Investing T can help you, uh, really it's a full service company to the investor. We start from pre-investment where we'd be able to help you with information, uh, with setting up your site visit, with helping to identify what the incentives are for your sector, and to help to, uh, uh, through finding a property and any other companies that would be able, you'd be able to partner with through both your value chain and as a joint venture partner. In the operational phase of your, your company, we will be looking through our one-stop shop to help you with any permits and approvals that you need. And uh, we'd also be able to serve as the one point of contact to liaise with other government agencies. So rather than having to move around to all of these various different government agencies, you can come to InvestCT and we will guide you through that process. Uh, in the post-investment phases, which is what we were talking about when we talked about aftercare, will help to resolve any bottlenecks you may have. And really what we're trying to do is help you to grow as a business and in doing so, continue to contribute to the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. 
So this is really sort of the brass tacks, right? In terms of we've been offering these services, these are the opportunities we have, and how successful has InvestTT been? So in terms of the investment figure, InvestTT has existed since 2013, uh, officially as a company. And in that time, we have facilitated around 1.3 billion TT dollars uh, of investment into Trinidad and Tobago. And in doing so, we have won the United Nations Conference for Trade and Developments Award in 2014 for excellence in promoting foreign direct investment for sustainable development. Uh, in 2014 as well, we were also ranked within the top 20% of investment promotion agencies in the world by the World Bank. And in 2015, we were named one of the top agencies by Site Selection Magazine uh, in its best to invest issue. Once again, just highlighting in terms of our one-stop shop, some of the services that we offer we will really be able to help with any permanent approval that you do have uh, to execute in order to get your business up and running. So our one-stop shop serves both the incoming investor, the existing investor in Trinidad and Tobago as well. So whoever you are within the investment chain or business development chain, our one-stop shop services are available to you. But following on from the one-stop shop, uh, the, the general business environment of Trinidad and Tobago is improving as well by the government of Trinidad and Tobago taking a lot of its services online. So there is the Trinidad and Tobago Connect, TT Connect service, which has a lot of information uh, available to you. You can find that at ttconnect.co.tt. But uh, an even greater help is the single electronic window of Trinidad and Tobago, and it's called TT BizLink. TT BizLink allows you to do such things as register your company online, uh, apply for your certificate of origin if you're an exporter, apply for your work permit if you're an incoming national, and even apply for your incentives online to the Ministry of Trade. And up to yesterday, the government of Trinidad and Tobago was bringing new services online through the single electronic window, and they will continue to do so into the future. So why Trinidad and Tobago? You know, this is really the point of this, this whole presentation. But uh, Trinidad and Tobago will offer you a great value proposition of being cost effective in terms of the general cost and what your production output would be from there. Uh, so when you're looking in this region or if you're looking competitively all over the world, because let's face it, investment now is not really sort of limited by any international border or by geographic location. It really, you can invest anywhere and we think that Trinidad and Tobago will always offer a very compelling case for being cost effective, especially in the manufacturing areas uh, and in some of the higher end I IT services and things where, uh, you know, the, the value of the input of production uh, and the quality of the input of production is important to you. Also, you have to be cognizant of invested services and as a full fledged or full service agency that services all needs of investors, we stand ready to communicate with you uh, and to make sure that you have the best process and the best experience possible in investing into Trinidad and Tobago. Through our market access, we can offer you just under a billion people in terms of your, your potential market with a domestic market through the CARICOM region of around 16 million people. We offer real opportunities. You would have seen in, in, in the section that Seiko and Takia presented to you that InvestTT as an agency is about presenting to you the actual opportunities on the ground and the information that pertains to those opportunities. So we, we, we help to sort of create a tangibility to the investment experience. And, you know, I, I think a factor that cannot be underscored uh, enough is that we offer a great quality of life in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, you know, starting at the beginning of the presentation, we showed you we're considered one of the happiest countries uh, in the world and we as Trinidadians love life as well as having had a history of a hundred years in the oil and gas sector and serving as the hub for uh, and regional headquarters for companies like BP we understand the international working environment so you can balance that wonderful idyllic Caribbean life uh, with a, a country that also understands the work and the ethic of international companies and also presents a wide array of cultural opportunities through our carnival or our multi-ethnic people, etc. And really what we got to talk about now is what's next. 
and we're really here to serve your needs. So how can you get in contact with us? We're providing you with our email addresses here. Uh, that's myself, Seiko, and Takiya. And you can also reach out to us via our website uh, and ask us any informational need that you may have. So anything that you need to know about the doing business environment, specific sectors, the specific opportunities that we show to you, feel free to drop us an email or a phone call or, or get in touch with us on our website and ask us those questions. And what we'd really love for you to be able to do once you've gotten that information on Trinidad and Tobago is come visit us here and make a site visit and see on the ground what opportunities really do exist in Trinidad and how you may best leverage your experience and your uh, company's experience in, and set up a business here to access the global market. So I think that really brings us to the end of our presentation uh, and the end of the information that we're providing with you today. It's by no means the end of this uh, communication for the, the 50 or so members uh, of the, the public that have logged into this webinar. We'd want this to be the beginning uh, of our interaction with you. Uh, and so what I'm going to do just to close things off is to open it up to any questions that you may have. Uh, I know that you've been asking questions in the chat during the course and uh, our team, uh, our marketing team has been answering some of those questions for you. But feel free to open, uh, to, to ask any additional questions you may have. And uh, Seku, myself, and uh, Takia are here to answer it, as well as the president of InvestIT, Raquel Moses, who has also joined us. We're going to open for about uh, five minutes, really, uh, for questions. Hmm? Any questions? Yeah. Are you seeing questions now? I'm not seeing any. Sorry, we're just trying to uh, sort of a little technical issue that we're having right now. Sorry, we seem to be having some technical difficulties in terms of accessing the questions. So um, maybe what I could suggest is if we've, we've collected the questions, um, we can get in touch with the individuals and uh, answer the questions to them directly. So one of the questions is how are we funded? Uh, and uh, we are funded by the government of Trinidad and Tobago. We are a state agency under the Ministry of Trade. I am Raquel Moses and I'm so delighted that you're still with us listening to um, or exploring interest in in investing in Trinidad and Tobago. So that was that question was posed by, by Paul. And so yes, we're funded by the ministry from by the government and directly under the purview of the Ministry of Trade. I have another question from Cindy asking if we can see her question. Cindy, I'll look down and see how do I know if you got your question. Yes, Cindy, I'm looking for the original question. Yes? So somebody asked in terms of uh, a startup company, can we give an example of a company that we worked with from the beginning to end? And so, yeah, definitely, uh, we, we mentioned i before. Uh, and so i hmm? When no. I guess what we want to know is, do you mean startup like a, a, a company starting business for the first time or a company starting in Trinidad and Tobago for the first time? 
Yeah, we, we, we need to know that, yeah. Yeah. So we'll come back to that question. Oh, what are some of the quick fix actions that can occur in TNT to improve our competitive rankings? Well, there are a number of things that we're working on, and part of our role is policy advocacy. So we actually have um, a short list of things that could improve our, our competitiveness. Among those things, um, you know, I think one of the things that, that can sometimes stymie our performance is government bureaucracy. Luckily, as an agency, that's what we are created to resolve. But we do more than that in that when we resolve an issue for a single investor, we feed that information back into the system so that the relevant agencies and ministries are aware of systemic issues and also aware of how to address them. So that's one of the things that we do. So we have a list of, of quick fixes that we explore to be able to try and improve our competitiveness ranking and we look at that on an annual basis. I mean we look at it daily, weekly, monthly, but we look at what improvements have we been able to deliver year on year to understand what are the things that we're shortlisting for the next iteration. Ah, what will be the plan for for the eTech Park? It is absolutely still a part of the plan. We are actually physically at eTech today, and um, we have a, a great partnership. We used to be a department under uh, eTech, and now we're our own organization. So the Tamna eTech Park, the flagship building has been completed and has about 400, three to 400 people in the building right now and we are still we still have square footage available for additional tenants however there are also 21 lots that are um, well just about 20 that are available lots of varying sizes for a number of different purposes and we are working with eTech right now to determine the best investments for those lots and actively sourcing investments for those lots Uh, regarding ICT, what opportunities there for insourcing software development and application development from a labor perspective versus utilizing outside resources? What you would have heard is uh, Seku would have mentioned our efforts to attract uh, software development. And we are producing uh, a small number of, of resources in that regard. We, through CSME, we have access to many, many more in the Caribbean region. But above and beyond that, with the program that we're pursuing with the IDP and creating the finishing school to help bring the resources that we develop up to speed, as well as looking at additional recruitment efforts, and InvestTT is also poised to process work permits in the event that, based on your type of uh, software design establishment whether or not you need to bring in resources. So we can, as a full service agency, we really have the ability to design a labor solution for you with a mix of local and foreign resources to meet our development needs as a country as well as your needs as a business. Ah, what incentives are there for keeping the IT-educated workforce available to contribute to the local industry versus seeking opportunities outside, as most of the companies tend to outsource their IT demands? Our effort is to try and bring in more uh, IT companies, yeah. more jobs. So by having more jobs available locally, uh, First, companies that require IT services would be able to get them locally, and educated persons would have a greater variety of options locally, as well as they'd have challenging work and, and career pathing and all kinds of excitement when they are looking at the, the potential for their career at home versus abroad. One of the things that we have in spades is quality of life and you find that when people leave they don't leave because they want to leave typically they're leaving because
they're looking at it from a career perspective. Our job is to make sure that from a career perspective, they have as many options as they need here, and the quality of life takes care of the rest. Is there op are there opportunities at the park listed on the website? Well, I would um, I'd want to know what 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 would you mean by opportunities? Is it uh, are there investment opportunities, or is it uh, are you looking at employment opportunities? I think we'd need some more specificity about that question to be able to answer it. Do we set targets for FDI for 2016 in terms of at least getting to the point of the initial memos of intent signed? Um, we, we do have annual targets for our particular generation of inve direct investment, not necessarily. We have a target for FDI and we have a target for LDI and we work on those every fiscal year. So we have a strategic plan that covers a three-year period, and for that period we set targets that we work on every year. Where are we located? We're located at Nicholas Tower, which is in Port of Spain. It's really close to the lighthouse, and we're located in the same building as the Ministry of Trade, very close to Hyatt. We're on Independence Square, so we're easy to find. What is the estimated completion date for the IT hub? It's Tamina. Oh, Tamina. So Tamina's, Tamina's finished now. So they, the flagship building is, is finished and we're in it right now. And uh, the lots will be coming on stream later this year. So if you are looking at building a new building, uh, the lots will be coming available. But if you're looking for square footage, there is square footage available for lease now. Any help in the healthcare sector for software? In terms of developing software internationally for the health sector? Yes, yeah, so some of that's taking place now and we're looking to, to help to build and grow more of that. How would we respond to the high concerns by the diaspora about the crime rates in Trinidad and Tobago? <laughs> You know, it, it's, an, it's a really interesting question, and one of the things that we look at, we look at a number of things when we look at how competitive uh, Trinidad and Tobago is. When we think about crime, um, we are not the highest in the region, and our region is not the highest in the world. And while that isn't good enough, certainly when you look at the incidence of crime and you break down the statistics, much of the crime is centered in particular areas by people who know each other. Uh, as, as a foreigner coming to invest or a member of the diaspora coming home, the, the incidence of crime um, is the incidence of crime is very low. So we would expect you to come and have a site visit and really see for yourself. It is an incredibly safe place to work and to live. You know, we're nowhere near needing to have armed guards or anything like that. It's, it's, it's a wonderful place. And so we are working with the Ministry of National Security on a crime statement as well as to identify some quick wins in their crime plan so that we can share those with our investors as they have concerns. Yeah, regarding any startups that we we've worked with, so we are currently working with a number of startups, but none of them are yet operational. So hopefully, you know, we can we can get one of those as a as a uh, as a case study very soon to be able to to mention a, a startup that we worked with that was not operational in any way, shape, or form before. Typically, we tend to work with businesses that are either already established or existing somewhere else, but we do have a few projects that wouldn't have had any other operation anywhere else. Based in the UK, would like to return home to set up a business in healthcare. I think that's fantastic, and we would love to talk to you more about that. You have everybody's email address. We hope to be able to set up a conversation with you. We can talk specifically about uh, some of the opportunities in the healthcare sector as well as some of the 
uh, data that we've seen in terms of the demand that could potentially help you to develop your business plan. Thank you. I, uh, someone said, great presentation. would like to set up a project in hospitality and education research for purposes of promoting artificial intelligence. Do you work on that as well? So right now we don't, but we would, uh, that's the kind of groundbreaking, future-proof, um, globally competitive industries that we are trying to attract. So we would definitely want to have a conversation about that and to get your information, to provide you with our information as to where we see that growing and the supporting infrastructure and potential ecosystem in Trinidad and Tobago that could support that industry. Yes, I got a, a lovely suggestion about um, being online. I think everything that we do is is online and uh, we are we are truly uh, an innovation hub within the government and so we're looking at a number of ways to be more savvy like uh, this is our first webinar and we hope first of, of very many and so it's one of the many ways that we want to be able to reach out and touch virtually so that we can um, be more connected. How is what we do uh, benefiting the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago? Well, uh, jobs. So when we bring investment into Trinidad and Tobago or we get existing investors to expand, they generate new jobs, they, in, including in leadership positions, they bring in new technology, they bring in new innovation, they bring in foreign exchange that helps us to support our economy. So there are a number of things that uh, our our services our services help to to build and to generate so I, I think, think our tourism of action as well it works in two sectors and can we facilitate both sectors Yes, so there's a question about tourism and fashion and whether or not we can facilitate both sectors and absolutely we can facilitate, those are two of the, the sectors that we specifically target in and, and quite luckily those are both Takia's sectors so she would be thrilled to engage and understand what your project is about and how we could potentially help to bring it to fruition. And I think uh, those are all the questions that I can see. And um, anything else that you have for us, you can feel free to <coughs> send us an email and um, or contact, uh, contact us through the website. As we mentioned, this webinar will be available on our website as well. And it's the first of many more that will be coming. So we will start to tailor them with your feedback as to what you'd like to hear and the kind of information that we provide. And once again, we'd love to thank you for your participation and, and for engaging. And I'd like to take this time while all of you are here to thank my team, the marketing team and their phenomenal work in putting this together, and Shamal, Takia, and Seku for uh, presenting to you. And so we look forward to your recommendations and following up with you and to helping to make Trinidad and Tobago even more wonderful than it already is. Thanks much. Bye.